as we pay tribute to our American flag and its stars and stripes, and all of our soldiers and veterans, policemen, firemen, first responders that ever lived. They gave up everything in their life so that the flag will always stand and this game will always take place. As a tribute to all of us Americans here and throughout the world, please join us in compassion with me with all our heart and soul as we honor America and honor freedom with the flag by singing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed have the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang glare the bombs bursting in air gay proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does the star spangle banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. God bless you and God bless America. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Colonial Sports Center. And thank you, John Tucci, for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. I'm here alongside Luke Yost, Tyler Gallo, as always. And Luke, it's been an interesting week for Army Athletics. We have a lot in store, but what do we have first for the people? Well, the basketball is back, Gallo, and that's really what is important right now. The Colonials back on the hardwood for the first time in a long time after not doing great last year in their first round in the Horizon League. That's right, and we'll send it over to Ethan Morrison, who has more on last night's game against Central Florida. Robert Morris men's basketball kicks off their 2021-2022 campaign down in Orlando, Florida as they took on the UCF Golden Knights on Wednesday evening. Now, let's see how they fared in this one. Additional Finance Arena, the site for this one as Robert Morris is up 2-0 early, but that won't be for long as Darren Green Jr. nails a 3 off the dribble here, 3-2 nights early on. Darius Perry, get to know the name. He'll be on your stat sheet a lot tonight as he nails a triple here to give the Knights a 6-4 lead. Then, Rasheem Dunn gets blocked by Checkback Dion, the new Mutombo finger wag right there. And then, Darius Perry once again nails a triple. He loves that spot right above the key there. It's 9-4 UCF. Then, Farron Flavors gets found in the corner by Justin Winston as Farron nails the triple there, his first bucket of the year, and he's now 14-9 UCF. Then, Jaron Williams able to navigate through traffic, nails a layup there to uh, bring the Colonials within three. Then a quarter three from Rasheem Dunn there. And then once again, check back to Young, making his presence known inside as he gets the UCF to extend the lead. 42-25 at the end of the first half. But the Colonials, they're making some headway. Michael Green the third nails a three from the corner there. And then once again, Justin Winston from that same corner, nails a mid-range jumper there. And then, once again, Rasheem Dunn with the shot there, nails that triple, brings it within nine. That's as close as Robert Morris will get as they lose this one, 69 to 59. Rasheem Dunn leads the way for Robert Morris. Let's break this one down. Now, like I said, Rasheem Dunn led the way for the Colonials in points. Also, Enoch Chiefs tied him with points, scoring his first double-double of his career, 12 points. And 10 rebounds. Darius Perry led the way for UCF, scoring 18 with five rebounds. Check back to Young. Also had a successful night. Down low, scoring four points and five blocks. What a rim protector. Now let's look at by the numbers. Uh, Robert Morse, 32% uh, field goal percentage with a 70.4% shooting from three point land. They out rebounded the Knights, though, however, tonight, out rebounding them 44 to 34. They struggled, though, in the turnover game, turning the ball over 16 times compared to UCF's nine. It was a struggle for them as UCF got 21 points off turnovers in this game. Now, two other things to note from this one is both Brandon Stone and Camp Ferris were on the sidelines in street clothes. The reasons were not given to us on why they were in street clothes, but we are looking to find more information in the coming days. Well, the Colonials have 
Kentucky up next on their schedule as they start the Kentucky Class at MTE in Lexington Friday night at 7 p.m. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Ethan Morrison. Thank you, Ethan. Let's hope Stone and Ferris can get back on the floor for the Colonials. They're big pieces, literally and figuratively, for Robert Morris. And then Robert Morris' women's team went to St. Bonaventure to take on the Bonnies. Let's see how they fare in their fa first matchup of the season. RMU drops this one, 61-53. Nikki Oppenheimer, 13 points, 8 rebounds for Nina, er, Ian Adams, excuse me. Sol Castro, 3 of 6, 4 rebounds, 12 points. RMU outscored in the paint. That's not how they want to start their season. This team really, as long as I've known them, has always been an inside-out team. Dominate the paint, make the three ball, and win games. That's how this team really operates. But right now, we're going to send it over to my backcourt partner, Tyler Gallo, for some buy and sell on the Army, women's, or Army basketball season as a whole. Thank you, Luke, and welcome to the New York Stock Exchange. I'm here alongside Michael Diemer and Colby Sherwin for buy or sell. And guys, we're going to be talking some Basketball, thank you for joining me on the show, by Absolutely. the way, tonight. So, first me. things first, we all know what's been in the news all week. Men's basketball heading down to Kentucky tomorrow night to take on their team that they took on twice, and they split against them the first two times. Now, guys, i gotta, I got to get your uh, your opinions on this. Now, do you think they're going to keep it close within 10 to 15 points against Kentucky? Kobe, we'll go to you first. I'm going to have to buy it. I think this is a team that can compete as long as they get off to a fast start. We saw yesterday that when they get off to a slow start or they're pressed a little bit, they ended up struggling. They got to be able to make their shots, keep up with this team, because Kentucky's 10 in the country, so Kentucky's not bad at all. They got to play well tomorrow, but I think they'll keep it close. That's right, and Deemer, same question to you. Yeah, I mean, as much as I'd love for them to keep it close, like, it is Kentucky, though. They are the number 10 team in the country. I, I do think it's going to be around, like, 20, about, about, I mean, the odds are not in the Colonial's favor. Oscar Sheepway had a massive game against Duke. I mean, that is Duke also. Uh, so here Wheeler also had a double-double for Kentucky, and they shot 40% from the three-point land. It's really not in the Colonial's favor, so, I mean, we'll see, you know. Yeah, that's right, and they got to watch out for that three-headed monster of Shibwe, of Ty Ty Washington, and Xavier Wheeler. So that's going to be an interesting game to watch tomorrow night, but we're going to stay with this team. Do you guys think this team can make it to the Horizon League second round? Now, if they make it to that far, they could potentially host a first round or even second round game. Michael, we'll start with you first. Yeah, I'd have to buy it. I mean, like, they are probably going to host a uh, first-round game. I mean, you never really know, obviously. But uh, the odds are definitely in their favor to actually have that. But, uh, yeah, it's it, – uh, the, the Kentucky uh, Wildcats are also a very good team. So I think there's definitely some learning experiences from that game. And I think that's going to definitely be the start of something fresh for the Colonials this season. That's right, Colby, same to you. I'm going to definitely have to buy it. Five games last year were decided by six or less points. A.K. Brahma's gone, and he really was a huge cloud on that locker room last year. We saw him be a little selfish with the ball, and that really issued them. They had better talent, Khalil Spear, Michael Green, Enoch Sheeks, Ferran Flavors Jr., and still, in my opinion, the best coach in the Horizon League in Andy Toole. A lot is in this team's favor to go far, and get to the second round. I don't know about the third round, but at least the first two rounds, they should be pretty good. Yeah, signs are all pointing up for the team, especially after they, they won, you know, or lost by 10 to a very good team in UCF. So now, we'll do the same question for the women's side. Women's basketball, you know, they've got a fresh fresh look on their team, a bunch of freshmen and some new players. So, uh, Colby, we'll start with you. Do you think they make it to the second round in the Horizon League tournament? As much as I want to buy it, I can't buy I'm going to have to sell it. Uh, they have talent, though. Uh, Mackenzie Amelia, Villafort, Sol Castro, I think they're going to compete with most, if not all, these games this year, I just don't know if they're ready yet. They're a very young team. They're very fresh, as you were saying. Right. That might be just too much for them. I think Sol Castro and Mackenzie Amelia are in for huge years, but I just don't know if it's enough. That's right, and Michael Sanders. Yeah, I definitely, have, I definitely have to agree with Colby. I mean, the very first game against St. Bonaventure, they shot 30% from the field, and they also shot 21% in the fourth quarter. I mean, we really don't really know, obviously, but it's, I do not have to sell for that. Yeah, well, it's going to be an interesting uh, season for these two teams as they start to get into their non-conference and conference schedules. But once again, guys, thank you so much for joining me on uh, to this episode of CSC. And we'll, we'll, we'd love to have you back another time. But for now, we're going to head to break, and we'll see you back here on Kelowna Sports Center. When I first I saw Turtle, anything. my I said, heart it up. was full. Not anything <laughs> but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. 
if I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth. Without any bread. And kissed them all soundly. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back here to Colonial Sports Center. Now, what do Iceberg and Olympian and the on-the-bench guys have in common? Well, right back, what is wrong? We'll move along to John Hanna, who has more. Time and time again, the hockey community has supported one another in time of need. That was no different on Sunday, as fans, players, and professionals across the North American landscape converge on a rink in Cranberry Township, just outside of Pittsburgh, to support the Hockey is the Goal campaign. The campaign, created by RMU hockey fans, strives to save the Robert Morris men's and women's hockey programs. The RMU's Hockey Celebrity Faceoff event featured two teams on the ice, with one representing RMU alumni and the other showcasing celebrities that included former NHL players, media personalities, and even the former mayor of Pittsburgh, Bill Peduto. Alums such as Logan Bill, Zach Lynch, and Kirsten Welsh skate on one end, where celebrities such as former Penguins Phil Bork and Colby Armstrong, former Pittsburgh Steeler Brett Kiesel, and Jacob and Ollie from the hockey comedy duo On the Bench opposed the alumni. These two teams battled it on the ice in front of a sold-out crowd, which illustrates the support for college hockey in Pittsburgh. All in all, there were 23 goals scored with the alumni team coming out on top, but in the end, all that mattered was the goal to raise money to save RMU hockey. Outside of the rink, fans could bid for different signed merchandise, along with signed sticks and pucks from members of the two participating teams. Ultimately, it was another Sunday in Pittsburgh, but it was one that supported the hockey community in Pittsburgh in an attempt to save Robert Morris hockey. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Jonathan Hanna. Thanks, John. Gal, you called that game with John. It looked like an interesting time, but our own, our own Owen Kreps caught up with some of the people that made it happen and that were on the ice. Here with uh, the On the Bench boys, Jacob and Ollie. Um, boys, what are we doing today? Uh, uh, obviously, they brought us out to the celebrity game because they wanted some real deals out here. Um, so we're going to be out here lighting lamp. And uh, obviously, yeah, we're just going to go out there hard. We're playing to win. It's not for fun for us. It's just about winning. It is. It is. And uh, also, the other goal is to raise money for the two programs. Oh, right, yeah. Robert Morris, uh, men's and women's hockey, go donate as well. Um, were you guys familiar with the teams before? Uh, this happen? Uh, we definitely heard about them, uh, and like you were saying, yeah, let's get some money raised for these, because we never want to see puck like fall off the earth, you know. How much does this mean to you to see all these people come out in the city of Pittsburgh and be able to support what was RMU hockey and what will hopefully be RMU hockey as soon as next year? Well, it's wonderful because there's a ton of support that is not only coming from the campus, but coming from the greater Pittsburgh hockey community. We want to have Division I hockey in Pittsburgh. And if we can keep it uh, within Robert Morris, I believe that we can build it to other universities as well. And I think what you saw today was that testament, that it is loved within the Robert Morris community, but it has gone beyond that as well. For me, growing up here, there was there's never a Division I you know, college, so we always had to leave home or even to have that dream of playing college hockey wasn't really realistic. Um, and the RMU program has succeeded in the men's and women's programs. Um, so, I mean, it says it up here in the practice ring, it says the kids are the future. So, you know, to give these little kids uh, a little hope and a dream to be around their family is something that I think is very important. It was just a good feeling, yeah. really, like just to, to hear the band there, see the atmosphere, how the guys get announced again. Um, just here, welcome to the ICRM, Hugh Colonials. Yeah. It just kind of gave us all chills. There was a period in the game where the celebrities were, were down significantly, and you're technically on both sides of the spectrum, right? <laughs> Did you think about changing jerseys and heading back over to RMU? 
you know, we're all competitors and we all just kind of came together and said, this isn't good enough. We got to tie this thing up. Yeah, so and you rallied. we sent out the big dogs and made them tie things up. Absolutely. <laughs> um, just overall, a success here. Stands were completely packed. Um, what does it mean to you and the potential of getting these programs back? You know, there was a couple times it was like, it was a little bit. Do you want to hold the mic? <laughs> It was a little bit emotional, like that whole beginning part when mm. you looked up and everybody started cheering and um, the end there. Yeah. So it was really cool to see that much support. Definitely a special event filled with special people and some great Pittsburgh icons as well. Of course, you can donate to Hockey is the Goal cause. You can see it all over social media as well. They just reached 50% of their goal with a big donation recently, Luke. That's so huge. it's going to be you know, important for this team as they try to reinstate them for the next year. And, and if, yeah, if you want to see go. if you want to see more of that and more of the hockey coverage, make sure you head to colonialsportsnetwork.com for more, as well as at rmu underscore csn on Twitter and at Colonial Sports Network on Instagram. We'll have you covered with all the latest in RMU athletics, including any updates in the hockey situation. And make sure you're continuing to watch this, including you know the rest of the episodes of this show. When we come back, we've got the football team. They were in action for the, as they're in the home stretch of their season. Could they keep it going against Kennesaw State? Stay tuned for more. Oh, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Welcome back here to Colonial Sports Center. Now, you know, the uh, Owls came up from Georgia as opposed to going down to Georgia as they took on the Colonials in what was their second to last, their penultimate home game of the season. Could the Colonials continue to high fly against the Owls or the Owls continue to soar through the skies? Take a look at the highlights from that game. Starting off quickly, triple option offense, no big deal here as it's taken in here. Uh, gets a little shovel like he's at the beach. He takes it to the dunes, 7-0. That's Nikeem Farrow on the score, 7-0 early on. First drive of the game for Kennesaw State. And then we see here Caleb O'Neill gets the pass. He's going to dive in for the touchdown. Look at that right there. Nice acrobatic catch. Take a look at her. Look at this, another angle. Just over the middle, spiral over the defender, and right in for the score. Now, the Colonials trying to make a little bit of a comeback. George Martin's had a pretty good season. He's going to continue to add to that here with a nice pass. Wide open, Jalen Brown takes it into the end zone. The freshman's been impressive in his short part of the season. Gets in there for a big score to make it a little bit closer. Now, here's a bit of an interesting play. Again on the triple option offense, Gabriel Benyard gets a little flip -a rooney from the quarterback and goes all the way for the touchdown. Xavier Shepard made the most of his offensive passing and rushing as they utilize this offense to a T in this game. The Colonials had no answer. Now trying to get Alak a little bit closer, he sneaks in for half a dozen points here to make the laugher a simple chuckle. And it's a 35 to 14 score here. And now as they get into the late thing, he's going to close it out. Adiolu Adeleke pours salt in the wound, making it a final score of 45 to 21. Jake Capcello would add a score later. But the Colonials fall and their postseason hopes are dashed. That was a great game from the Owls. What you want to see if you are their coach, it's prototypical football. You run the ball to set up the pass, vice versa. Great game. Let's see what the stats look like after this game because it was a wild one at the Joe. 45 21, our final score. Kennesaw State, 197 yards through the air. Didn't seem like that much at the game, Gallo, but it was a ton of yards through the air. They also put up 240 on the ground. 
RMU just had no answer for the Kennesaw State triple option. That's right, and let me tell you what, it was still a good game for the offense nonetheless. When you put up 21 points, you're expecting to win, but they didn't. That's how good Kennesaw State is. George Martin, 293 yards. He moves closer to 2,000. 284 away, he will become the first Army quarterback since Eric Kualinski in 2006 to do so. He could do some with these last two games remaining this year. And K KSU's Xavier Shepard, super efficient on the game. 8 for 12, you saw it there. The guy was on fire. Yeah, he absolutely was. And, you know, one of our very own had a bit of a interesting athletic moment in that game. We'll take it to that, the clip of that game. Thank you, Colby Sherwood. It was an amazing athletic moment, Gallo. Absolutely. Look at this, our very own. Colby Sherwin, the former linebacker at elementary school. He's the new RMU Century Media News Editor. Video credit to his mom, Debbie Sherwin. She's a great photographer, Colby. You better get her in here to take some pictures for us. Here we go, lined up, ball in the 10, 20 yard shot. Colby, five yard run up. He nails it. He ain't Cody Parkey anymore. He nails it, no double doink. It's perfect, Chick-fil-A for a year. Colby Sherwin, what a guy. Hey, make sure you befriend Colby the next year. Get some free Chick-fil-A off of him. Yeah, with uh, Nick Biseglia on his way out, maybe Colby Sherwin is on his way in. Colby, Colby, crowd goes wild. Colby doing the most for RMU Century Media. Yeah, definitely an impressive moment nonetheless. But there was a team that was actually in some postseason action over the weekend as men's soccer headed up to the Cream City to take on the Milwaukee Panthers in the opening round of the Horizon League playoffs. How could they fare against the Panthers in this one? They didn't fare well, Gallo. One nothing. The tie or the goal in the 86th minute from Grat, and you see it there. A heartbreak for the Colonials. This was supposed to be a good year for this team. Four shots, one on goal for Brian Congo and Gabriel Golarisso. Gol excuse me. Seven saves, one goal against. Again, a heartbreak for the Colonial number six seed facing number three seed in the Horizon League quarterfinals. Hey. But this is a good building year oh, for this absolutely. Colonials team. Absolutely. A team that scored just one goal last season. There's a lot that goes into a season where they made the playoffs after scoring one goal. Let's take a look at the stats from this season, the comparison between last year and this year. You know, it really was a tough one last year. They played in Cannonsburg indoors with a low ceiling, really messed with them. They allowed 18 goals just as opposed to 27 this year. And the shots per game weren't different, but they actually capitalized on them. They scored 17 this year as opposed to the, one. The best way to describe this, Gallo, is 2020 is like Bruce Wayne. 2021 is like Batman. A million times better, obviously. Yeah, goals scored 17 to one. I mean, obviously, it also comes down to how many games they play. They only played eight games last year compared to this year where you have, what, 16 games under your belt. But, again, this is a new team, a new offense, a new strategy. They are going for gold in Horizon League this year. That's right. And what a better way to do it than picking up some Horizon League honors. Grant Glorioso, as you saw in that last game, Horizon League Player of the Week, and Noe Bajot, all-freshman team for the Horizon League. When we come back, we've got some more. You don't want to miss it here on Colonial Sports Center. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I oh, do. Easy. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You could say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome, Welcome back, back here to Colonial Sports, Sports Center. Center. Gal, hey, this is my segment, Jinx, dude. Bring me a soda, Luke Yost. Oh, my goodness. I'm not getting you a soda, pal. It's a pop in Pittsburgh. Anyway, the Robert Morris volleyball team, tough going as of late, both on and off the court, obviously losing their head coach last week. Their assistant head coach, Danny Doherty, steps in. Let's see how he fared in his first game as the head man for the Robert Morris Colonials volleyball team. 
a three to one loss to Youngstown State. Essentially straight sets after winning the first one. 29 and a half points by Paula Garisic, or Rissing, excuse me, and uh, Emma Granger tried to keep tried to keep pace. 15 points off 11 kills for her, but again, a tough go of it for the Colonials Volleyball League team as of late. That's right, and it would only get tougher as they faced off against one of the best teams in the Horizon League in Milwaukee, who came to, down to, came to town today to take them on. Let's see how they fared in this one. And the Panthers, not surprisingly, swept them in this one. The team is 15-2 and two coming into this game and all rolling. I mean, you know, Carmen Heileman with 22.5 points and Maddie Malone with 12 digs and 10.5 points. Also, Riley Vaughn balled out for Milwaukee as they really just ran away with this one. Nothing the Colonials could have done against this team. The Army's had a tough go of it as of late, but Gallo, what is your game to watch for, for this week? It's well, going to be a big week for Army. You know, it's the game, that, like I said, has been in the news all week, and that is men's basketball taking on Kentucky at Rupp Arena this Friday. Of course, Enoch Cheeks put up a double-double in his first game of the season. We'll see what he has in store against a much, much tougher opponent. Make sure you watch out for Oscar Shibway. Also put up a double in his first game, but picked up 19 rebounds in that one. Really an impressive team. Got to watch out for this, guys. This is always a good matchup, and you're always going to remember the nostalgia of that first game. But here's the what if story, Gallo. If you're at Kentucky and you lose to RMU again, would you schedule them for a potential fourth match of this this rivalry? Air quotes. It's really tough for me, honestly, because you know it might be some sour for John Calipari, but as you can say, there's that hometown feel to it. Yeah, the first game was a, a, a not home sweet home for him as they came back and won. But uh, yeah, I think they they could do it, but I don't see it happening for a bunch of years like they did the, with the last two games. Great, Gallo. Uh, my game to watch this week is Robert Morris football goes down to Monmouth to try to knock off a really good Monmouth football team. Obviously, the ground game is going to be super important in this one. Both teams show incredible promise in the backfield. Elijah Jackson for the Colonials, uh, 502 yards on 146 rushes, not too great. Two straight games with a rushing touchdown for that guy. He's really going to show up for the Colonials. But Ferry on the other side of the ball, he's a great running back. This guy world-class potential in this guy he can do what he can do it all he can catch up the backfoot he can also run out of the backfoot it's going to be tough for this defense to stop and that's right and Columbus Sports Night will be on the road covering both of those Ooh. games so make sure you stay tuned for that content but yeah of course they're not the only teams in action this weekend take a look at the games across campus so you see uh Friday you got volleyball and as we said men's basketball against number 10 ranked Kentucky volleyball has uh three games this week one completed tonight two more remaining of the weekend and then of course football at Monmouth and women's basketball versus Zachary in their home opener and next week, before the show next week, we got some other action. Sunday, we get volleyball. Men's basketball on Monday. They take on Ohio. And it could be a really good week for RMU men's basketball. They take on Ohio and Mount St. Mary's, get themselves in the right path. And women's basketball does take, get, takes on Detroit Mercy in Detroit. That's always an exciting game to watch. Those are two really good teams That's right. that just well, haven't found themselves yet in the Horizon League. That's right. Detroit Mercy actually last season didn't even get to play as they uh, had problems with their coach and they shut down for the main of the season. A brand new roster. We'll really see how they fare in that one. But Luke, I mean, just Kentucky. Come, I mean, going to Kentucky. How excited are you for this game? I'm super excited. I, you, you guys talk about it great over there. But my biggest thing is this RMU team. They have a lot of promise, right? And it's every That's year right. you kind of get told this is the year. Hey, this is the year. And then they did it in 2020, right before the pandemic happened. It was, it was a great moment of ex exhilaration. And then all of a sudden we're we're down to the down to the bottom. And then when you got to when you get to look at a game like this, last year wasn't a good year. Last year was right. a down year for, oh, for them, absolutely. and it was, it was, it was bad. Don't even want to discount it either. How much this game plays in a, fa a mental factor of this team is going to be incredible. This, if they can somehow keep it close, like you mentioned over there, or win, <laughs> if they win this game, Gallo, this God is a willing. team that – might never lose again. Yeah, it's it's definitely the situation where even if they lose, steel sharpens steel. It's a good team they're going to go against. It's going to prep them for all the best teams remaining in the season and all the good teams. And, I mean, of course, like I said, CSN is going to be on the road covering these games. So, again, if you want to stay tuned for all this content, make sure you head to ColonialSportsNetwork.com, at ColonialSportsNetwork on Instagram, and at RMU underscore CSN on Twitter. We'll have all the content surrounding these games, all the hype surrounding these games with Ghost. It should be one of our best weekends in CSN history. Oh, it's going to be incredible. It's better. It's it's bigger than just go and cover single games. You're going right. to go do two at a time. Yeah, two it's teams be wild, at a time. Gallo. Who's all going to the CSN trip? That's it, right. Well, we names? got of course myself, Ethan Morrison, Nathan Bresser, and Wyatt Fiedler heading out to Kentucky to take on that game. And then of course Owen Kreps, Jonathan Hanna, and Robert Bradley are on the road for football at Monmouth. Should be a good weekend of sports and a good weekend of coverage. Also in that football game, watch out, George Martin, 2,000 yard watch. He's he, he's getting close. He's getting he's got very two close. games left, and it's going to be. An exciting race to watch the game inside the game. 
And it's going to be that Monmouth game too. That's one of the you, you mentioned Star Iron Serpent or Steel Serpent Steel. It's going to be that similar similar game. And you, we at the top of the show we watched the national anthem from, from John Tucci. You mentioned Happy Veterans Day to everybody. For myself, John Gal or Tyler Gallo, John Hanna upstairs as a producer. All the people down here on the floor upstairs. This is CSC.